happy to be here. Hello. As you can see, uh, this is a collaboration of very many people, and I'd like to thank them in advance. And what we're talking about is psychophysiology for personalized mood adaptation. So psychophysiology, I thought I had to explain a bit about it, not knowing that Byron would basically tell you most of it in his talk just before me. But it's the way that you measure effects, that you measure emotions, that you measure mood. And emotions are manifested in many ways. They have subjective feelings, there are behavioral components like facial expressions, but they also affect your body state. Um, you start sweating, as I do now, there are heart rate changes, there are changes in respiration frequency, and just like Byron, I will focus on sweating, that is on measuring the conductance of your skin. So this is a picture that explains uh, how it is measured. There are the sweat glands in your skin um, that are under the control of the autonomous nervous system and that fill up with water, not, not necessarily make you sweat, but at least fill up with water when you're aroused. And when there's water in your skin, the conductance of your skin rises and that's what measured. You see the graph um, of a peak rising and decaying and we've measured that as well in, the, um, in this graph over here. Um, but we also measured much longer stretches of time, just like Byron did. So we used our own device for it. It's a wristband, much like Byron's, um, but it was developed at our lab. And we um, tested a few patterns to make sure that it tells something about your daily life. So there is a regular pattern that you can see on the top. Um, but we also have a segment in which we were uh, watching a soccer match. I think it was the 2010 World Championships. Um, it was a Dutch guy watching a Dutch uh, match and they made goals, as you can see. And the arousal increased and increased and increased. Same guy doing meditation in um, the lower slide, where you can see where the start and the end of the meditation were and that uh, uh, there was a decay of the number of peaks and a decay of the general level. So this is to convince you, if Byron hadn't already done that, that skin conduction tells you something about what is going on in your life. Um, and you can track it during your day. So this is a trace that is my personal history and you can see the green line skin conductance tracking. You can see also the vertical purple lines, which are the moments that an internal um, algorithm in the device computed that there was a steep increase uh, in skin conductance. So there must be an increase in arousal. And at that moment, there was a bit of a, a buzz notifying me, okay, this is a moment for your arousal. And researcher as I am, I noted down all the moments of arousal, what was I doing then? Um, so this was the moment that I stepped into the dentist chair and I'm afraid of the dentist. So I wasn't at all surprised that I would get a buzz at that moment. Um, and then later that afternoon, I decided that I had to check something in the personal stuff of my teenage son and you can see that that's this peak. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the anticipation that, that Byron talked about as well. Eh? So, but this anticipation was way longer. I was really working my way up to doing that. Um, it shows that I have a conscience, if nothing else. So I wasn't surprised that I got the bus there either. Um, but what did surprise me when looking back at this data was that that peak was so um, much higher than the dentist peak. If you'd ask me in advance, I said the opposite, right? So it did teach me something um, and it made me wonder about that peak. Um, and it gave us the idea that we could use maybe this technology to help people get a grip on what happens with their moods in daily life. So this is the story that I want to tell you uh, today. So how can we use a skin conductance device like this in bringing awareness of your mood? And uh, in doing that, we cooperated with several institutes. Uh, for instance, uh, we cooperated with the uh, Swedish Institute for Computer Science, uh, Christina Höck and people in Sweden, where we used our wristband and their effective health application um, to give people an immediate impression of what their arousal levels were. So you see the very nice diagram that they have made. It's a spiral. Um, 
and it spirals outward to you and they have some sort of color coding. Green is not that much aroused uh, and red is aroused. Um, and um, if you look uh, very carefully, you can see these uh, spikes over here, which are the spikes that measure the activity. So you know whether you've been physically active at that moment or not. And uh, we did a test uh, with users uh, with them. Um, they could use it for four weeks. And one of the big surprises for us was that while we had been very, very concerned of the privacy of their data, they started sharing it um, between members of a couple or on Facebook and Flickr. So to us, this was a sign like, OK, people might be open to sharing this. Um, we also did interviews to see how they uh, reacted on it. And um, this is, I think, the best story. You can see here that there is an option that is in the, uh, in the interface that allows people to tag certain moments so that they get a grip on what they were doing and what it means to them. And this person uh, reflected on this week's view where you can see that it's, well, it it's, uh, starts at Saturday and it goes all the way through the end of Thursday. Um, there is a red line everywhere. Right? At the, towards the end of the day, there is a red line, a stress line. Right? And this person realized that each day, at the end of the day, she would um, go out uh, and do all sorts of chores in homes, uh, getting the garbage out, uh, checking laundry, things like that. So she would work herself up just before going to bed. And she thought, well, maybe that's the reason why I don't sleep that well at night. Um, so this, this service, this is what the service wants to do. It wants to personalize your experiences by measuring them, by giving the opportunity to reflect on them. Here is a graph that shows you all the individual days of the week. So that if you get a better understanding of yourself um, and what you're doing, you might be able to change that, right? So it's just reflecting what we measure in a nice way. And it brings all the analysis basically in your own hands. You should do the analysis by looking at the visuals. Why am I stressing this fact? Because we also did another service in cooperation with another group of people at the Technical University of Eindhoven, Natalia Sidorova and team. And they went about it in another way. They used, again, our skin conductance device. And they used, again, um, a set of people. Um, but they based all their uh, inferences on the agenda of the people. So this was a group of teachers. And they had this uh, five-day-a-week teaching class schedule. Um, and um, they were actually classifying all the things that were in the agenda um, as to whether they were arousing or not. So this is the processing. You start with a very noisy signal. You do some filtering and smoothing. And you build a histogram over there uh, so that you can make categories. And then in the end, you can bring categories um, to all of um, the moments. And then you can say for one hour, this was a red hour or this was a green hour. Um, and you can do a, grip, a group visualization. So this was a seven week um, experiment uh, for uh, four participants. And on average, you could see that these three weeks before the fall break were very stressful. And those seemed to be um, um, more relaxed. Um, and this would be a view that their employer would be interested in, um, especially then if the employer could see that this general line also held, holds for all the individuals, all four individual teachers that we had there. Um, but OK. Today is about personal relevance, so I'll skip to the individual data here. And, and this is a graph that shows to one individual um, how specific activities um, like this one or that one that might come in repetitive in this course of seven weeks um, have what stress levels they have. And it also shows you which people are connected to these activities. So this is a way where we also want to give insight to the user in how his stress or his arousal has been over the time, but we do the analysis for him, right? So that's, that's the difference. And also this we present um, to um, 
uh, to the teachers in hindsight. And this is one of the remarks we got, saying, OK, look at this um, red and orange bullet. It actually is a performance evaluation. And though the report of the performance evaluation is very nice and positive, um, the red and orange does not lie, right? So the report may lie, uh, but the measurements don't. It, um, it shows how much people believe that there is some truth in the measurements and also that it makes them reflect on, okay, but this is the reality. Um, the hope again is that knowing what the reality is will bring the opportunity for you to adapt your life. Adapt your life. So this is um, the graph of one person who was doing teaching on Monday and Wednesday and doing organizational work on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And she realized that that took a lot of her energy, right? Right at that moment. And thinking, okay, uh, maybe I should change that. Maybe I should um, lower the amount of organizational work that I do. Okay, so both of the services work with the idea that if you can um, monitor your stress, you can bring awareness of your stress and that will bring people to change their lives. Um, there's one question that is in the back of my mind though, is will that be helpful to them? And um, I'm working with a VG student at the moment to figure out whether it is. And this is one of the first experiments that we did in which we gave people feedback, in this case about their heart rate, not their skin conductance. Um, and we also uh, gave them a number of stressful tasks and we asked them to rate their stress level. And you see that the mean correlation between the heart rate and the stress level is at most 0.50. You also see that it depends on the feedback type. And um, if there is no feedback at all, right, number one, um, the correlation is actually really low. Uh, but if you do give feedback, the correlation is much higher. And then it doesn't differ that much whether you say, okay, the feedback that you get tells your heart rate, or whether you say the feedback that you get is actually your stress level. In both cases, um, the correlation between the heart rate and the stress changes. So it makes you look, if you get feedback, it makes you look different at yourself and that could be a positive but also a negative thing if you're thinking of building these sorts of stress awareness things. Okay, so that's a story where we uh, try to make people aware of their moods. But taking it one step further, we also try to be able to adapt people's moods without making them the aware of all the things. And this is the story that I'll tell you now. It is based on an effective closed loop. It's a closed loop, an engineering thing in which you measure, in this case, body related measurements that tell you something about your mood. You interpret them. You think of a way how you could influence um, this mood and, and, and uh, how to decide which influence you want to go to now, and then you actuate it. So in this particular case, we wanted to do that with the help of music. Music is one of the best known ways to influence people's mood, both in the lab and in real life. And also there is a bit of a difficulty because music's preference is different for everybody, right? So there's a challenge. How do you visualize that here? So um, the first thing we did was, let's see uh, whether if, if you listen to uh, what you think yourself, as positive, exciting um, songs, whether that brings different uh, physiological reactions than what, when you listen to what you think are negative, relaxing songs. And yes, it does, because you can see the two graphs. There is a row of eight songs of either category that are played in order. And if you listen to the negative, relaxing songs, you follow the lower pattern and your skin conductance level will not rise on average, whereas it will rise and on average and stay up uh, when, you're look, uh, when you're listening to the more positive, exciting songs, right? Okay, so this is something that you can do in the lab um, and that will work. Now, the idea is that if you want to change your mood in a direction, you work in a um, particular way to select those songs that you need to get there. So we took this into an experiment in real life um, where people our participants were working, they were doing their ordinary job um, 
at the workplace. Um, but in addition to that, they were listening to music um, and we were measuring their uh, skin conductance. This time we were measuring it with a traditional Holter device and with a wire that would go uh, to their fingers. And um, they also would be listening to music um, by their headphone, right? So the thing to remember is that they were actually doing their everyday life job work. So this is what you get, right? This is a difficult graph. So I'll, I'll, I'll take some time in explaining it to you. Um, what you see, each dot that you see is a song. Each dot that you see is a song that has been listened to. And um, what is uh, indicated on the vertical axis is uh, the change in skin conductance level uh, during this song. So basically the difference from the end of the song uh, minus the beginning of the song. So this is what this song does to you. This is the, cha the change in skin conductance level that this song brings to you. And you see that on the vertical axis, there's quite some spread. Um, and you see that also it depends a bit on what is on the horizontal axis. And that is the level, the pre-stimulus level. So that's the beginning of the song. The level that you have at the beginning of the song influences how much it will change when you listen to the next song. And this is known as the law of initial values. It basically says if your level is up already, chances that you'll get much higher are lower than when it's down, then the chances that you'll get uh, much up are a bit better. And you can see um, that there is a nice linear relation to it. And um, so if we want to know what this particular song is doing, we correct for this uh, linear relation. And for each song, we um, calculate this residue, the distance to the correction, the line. So now we know that this song, on average, will cause this effect in skin conductance. Right. Now, we listen to each song several times. Um, we are working meanwhile, so sometimes our skin conductance will be up when we are listening to it, and sometimes our skin conductance will be down when we are listening to it, but we correct for that. And we get a number of steps that this particular song will make. So this is the graph of a song that usually goes down in skin conductance. Because you see, most of the residuals are negative, right? There's one is positive, but the rest is negative. So on average, this is a song that brings your skin conductance down. Whereas on average, this is a song that brings your skin conductors up, right? And there are also other types of songs. There are neutral songs that never do anything. And there are songs that are all over the place and that you cannot trust at all, right? But now, each of the songs that we've been listening to, that this individual person has been listening to for several times, we know what it does. And we can use it to select um, the best possible way to uh, enhance their mood. So we measure the personal reactions to individual songs, their own database. We make these probabilistic predictions and then we choose the right song with the right impact in the right direction. So we did an experiment where we chose um, eight songs that we measured would bring their skin conductance level up and we choose eight songs that we measured would bring their skin conductance level down. And this is the graph we got. It looks a lot like the graph that I showed you in the beginning, but the difference is that here the songs were selected on the basis of measurements, and the measurements were done on the person's own individual database, right? So, yes, you can see that during work, on average, skin conductance goes up anyway, right? You're working, you're getting more and more excited. But how much it goes up depends on whether we have been selecting songs to regulate your skin conductance up or whether we've been selecting songs to regulate your skin conductance down, right? And the nice thing is um, that if you ask at the end of the eighth song um, to the person, so how do you feel right now? There is also a difference in the arousal excitement level that this person experiences, right? So the experience is changed as well. Now, to be quite honest to you, uh, we also had a third condition here. Um, a so-called dynamic condition in which uh, our actual target was to end up in the middle here. We did not succeed, right? And the way we wanted to end up was that if we are heading for this middle condition, if we were overshooting, we'd present the song that would bring it down in the other direction. And if we were too low, we'd present the song that would go up again. So we did it dynamically. Um, and all in all, um, it, it brought up excitement. So that means that what we think that happened there was that the changes between the different types of music brought up a lot of, um, let's say, tension as well, the reason why the skin conductance goes up. 
doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot um, arrive at a point in the middle here, because of course, if you would have selected the songs that were neutral, probably you would have arrived there. So that brought us um, to um, this user interface for a possible application where um, the songs have been measured and they will be selected for this individual user from his individual playlist. Um, the only thing that he has to do is to push the button to see whether he wants to get relaxed, whether he wants to get energetic or whether he wants to be in a neutral mood. So he makes the choice where he wants to go, but for the rest of that, it's automatic. And this particular interface was implemented in a Ferrari, um, as if that's not, not excitement enough, um, but it worked there as well. Good. So that is the way in which we automatically um, try to adapt mode. And um, I think this is the summary slide um, um, heading both ways. Um, psychophysiology uh, supports personalization. Um, it can bring personal mood awareness and it allows automatic personalized mood adaptation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.